Okay, hello you 10. Um, plan for today then is to look at the second experiment looking at the effective rate of reaction when we add a catalyst in. So we've gone through the experiment with zinc and sulfuric acid when we didn't have a catalyst and we timed every 30 seconds and recorded the volume of gas produced. So remember we had a metal plus an acid so it was forming a salt and it was forming hydrogen gas. So we've got the same thing this time. We've got our zinc, we've got sulfuric acid reacting. We're going to form our salt and we're going to form hydrogen gas but we're going to add in a catalyst this time and as we add in the catalyst we're going to look and see whether our rate of reaction changes. So we've got 25 mils of acid going into our conical flask. We're going to put in five pieces of zinc and then we're going to put in one, one mil of copper sulfate. So the copper sulfate is going to be our catalyst. So we'll put in five pieces of zinc, we'll put in our one mil of copper sulfate, put bung on and then we're timing every 30 seconds. Okay, so we can see that a reaction is taking place because we can see some bubbles. So therefore, we must be producing a gas in this reaction. And what we need to be able to decide is whether this reaction is happening faster or slower or at the same rate as our previous reaction. So we've got nearly 30 seconds. We're on 30 seconds now. And we have produced 20 cubic centimetres of hydrogen gas. So we're on to our next 30 seconds and then looking at volume of gas that we produce. So remember it's the same reaction as before, zinc plus sulfuric acid reacting to form zinc, sulfate and hydrogen gas. So this time, 30 seconds, and we are on 55 cubic centimetres of gas. Although we've added in copper sulphate this time, the copper sulphate is acting as a catalyst. So it's really important that we understand that the catalyst isn't used up in the chemical reaction. So it's there, it's increasing the rate of our reaction, but it's not being used up in our chemical reaction. So our next 30 seconds and um, we are now at 90 cubic centimetres of hydrogen gas being produced. So when we add in a catalyst, it's important that we understand that the catalyst provides an alternative pathway with a lower activation energy. So think back to previous lessons. What does that activation energy mean and why does it help? if there's a lower activation energy. Then the next 30 seconds, we are now on 120. So we're on our final minute now looking at volume of hydrogen gas being produced. Okay, so really common exam question. We'll ask why does adding a catalyst increase the rate of a reaction? It's really important that we're able to describe that or explain the fact that as we add in a catalyst, we're providing an alternative pathway with a lower activation energy. So final, well, just coming on to the final one now, we're on 140. So our final 30 seconds is nearly up. So our final 30 seconds volume of gas produced is 180 cubic centimetres. So our results this time round then. So we've got our results from when we didn't use a catalyst. So we could see that the volume of gas produced at the end was 31 cubic centimetres. And then when we have used our catalyst or one mole or one mil, sorry, of copper sulphate, we can see that the volume of gas that we produced at the end was 180. So we can see that as we've added in a catalyst, the volume of gas produced has increased, which means that as we've added in a catalyst, we've increased the rate of our reaction. Okay, so have a look through the remainder of the sheet and then see if you can answer this question at the bottom. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.